And with that, we'll move on to some other G's. Uh, one of the things that caught my attention and that I wrote about this week was uh, about the GM partnership with AT&T on 5G cellular connectivity. And um, I thought this was really fascinating. And, and I, I actually am a car person. Um, I It's funny, I, I don't know. Like that I've always been that way, but I'm kind of a car person now, and um, and I'm really fascinated by the advancements in the automotive industry, and you know what we're seeing happening in some key partnerships. But speaking of this partnership, the GE and AT and T partnership, um, the companies announced that they'll bring 5G cellular connectivity to select Cadillac, Chevrolet, and GMC vehicles by 2024. And so that connection boost will impact, you know, faster navigation, better coverage, more reliable software updates, more rapid software updates for like in-vehicle in infotainment systems. And, um, and also an interesting point is that GM models from 2019 and newer that are equipped with 4G LTE will also be able to migrate to the new network infrastructure. So I think this is really important um, for a couple of reasons. One is, you know, I think that we're seeing the democratization of connected cars. And we talked about this earlier before this show started. And I drive a fancy luxury car. And, um, you know, and the this is the probably, well, this is actually the second luxury car that I've had that's been pretty connected, but this one is even more connected. And and I, I drive a 2020 Mercedes. And as I was telling Ron in our earlier conversation, I don't think I could run into anything if I tried because the car is equipped with so many safety features that it literally shuts down if, you know, it senses me getting too close to somebody or if it senses me backing up and there's something in the way. And it's just really, really interesting. Um, and then, of course, once you get used to those kinds of safety fe features, or if you drive a vehicle like a Tesla and you're used to getting software upgrades, you know, th through the internet, right? Um, you know, all of a sudden it seems so backwards to be driving a car that doesn't afford sort of that safety and those luxuries and those kind of easy updates. And so, you know, I, I wrote last year about a partnership between Hyundai and NVIDIA um, that will enable Hyundai to bring um, connected vehicle features that, you know, the top of the line connected vehicle features to its entire fleet in about this same time period. So I think what we're seeing is um, car makers embracing the IoT, embracing 5G, embracing all things that, you know, that contribute to the, the connected car ecosystem. And I think that's a good thing. Um, and I think that, you know, um, what this announcement signals, of course, is AT&T's belief in their 5G network and that it'll be ready to handle millions of connected cars by the end of 2023 when those 2024 models are released. And um, so I so I think we're we're going to see some impressive growth there. Ron, what are you are you paying attention at all to the, you know, to the whole connected car and, and 5G driving this innovation there? Oh, you bet. Uh, like you, Shelley, I'm a car lover. And so it's, uh, I think, uh, one reason why, you know, the major carriers are promoting uh, their collaboration efforts on the automotive side is because almost everybody is interested in it. It's a great yeah. way to, you know, promote your wares. And mm -hmm. uh, I think it's important uh, that it really is when it comes to, you know, 4G, 5G connectivity, mostly about enabling uh, the infotainment. Uh, capabilities. Um, for example, uh, I have an older model Honda Odyssey, and the infotainment is really a DVD player. And, you know, that's a hassle right. to have to switch those out, you know, and you have, you know, little kids in the back, and, you know, they're clamoring for, I want to watch Despicable Me instead, you know. <laughs> so right. it's it's, exact, it's almost you have to pull over if you really want to be uh, safe right. about, you know, uh, updating that. And uh, what I think is definitely exciting about the 5G connectivity uh, uh, capabilities is, you know, just having that uh, flexibility to do video streaming 
to, you know, the infotainment system, having a, just more flexibility on, you know, the computer screen and so forth. And I think that will be welcomed by everybody. It'll make cars safer. It'll just give people more options uh, to, you know, uh, entertain uh, the backseat drivers, especially on, you know, long distance driving. So this is just, you know, I think a good example of the ecosystem coming together and improving these capabilities. Also, I think it's important that uh, when you look at uh, suppliers on the Silicon side, like Marvell, I, I think they're definitely advancing what could be called you know, Ethernet working uh, for the uh, automotive sector. So instead of like legacy proprietary interworking, uh, which can make you know the cars more expensive, uh, they also uh, quite simply uh, can be complex to assure interworking. By using uh, the Ethernet uh, networking principles that are already universally applied in you know offices and so forth to automobiles, I think we can see even more advances in terms of uh, these capabilities. So it's a great example of you know different technology trends coming together to you know fulfill that vision of you know the automobile becoming uh, much safer uh becoming um, uh just smarter more agile and so forth so it's a thumbs up well and i think that you know our conversation here over the course of the last couple minutes has focused on consumer vehicles but there are huge applications that this new level of connectivity brings to you know fleets and fleet management services and you know um when I was writing this article about the GM and AT&T partnership, one of the things that uh, GM's VP of Global Connectivity, Santiago Chamorro, mentioned that their their OnStar vehicle service connects about 60 million vehicles across, uh, you know, U.S. roadways. And so <clears throat> enabling that 5G access, the 5G network for strategic partners will play a big role in, you know, growing other mobility services and, and things that we see in smart cities of the future. And, you know, that future is this far away. <laughs> You know, it's not really a long time away. So I think that was, I think that was really exciting. And, and I'm also, you know, we look a lot here, our team in general is, you know, we look across the industries as a whole and trends. And, you know, I mentioned, um, I mentioned Hyundai's partnership with NVIDIA um, and, you know, the, what NVIDIA does is really allows powers that connected car operating system across the entire Hyundai fleet using NVIDIA's drive platform. Um, and this is really a focus on extending a software defined connected car experience and bringing the very best in driving, which I think is really cool. Um, and, you know, some recent news that that our colleague Daniel Newman wrote about, too, was, you know, watching what Qualcomm's doing in the automotive industry. And, and we expect to, you know, they're doing some pretty significant things, and we expect that to be even more significant in the coming months. Um, Qualcomm's recently pursued um, Vianeer, which is a uh, developer of full stack automotive technologies, including safety systems like radar and vision systems and driver monitoring systems and all different kinds of technologies, also autonomous driving features and restraint controls. And so, you know, we don't know yet what's going to happen with Qualcomm's bid to acquire Vianeer, but we are certainly watching that with anticipation because I, what it does show us is that Qualcomm's ambitions and um, strategy and, and strategic focus in the automotive industry is significant and certain to get even more significant over time. So I thought that was, you know, pretty interesting in terms of, you know, what's going on for car people. Yes. And I think it's important to note that a lot of, you know, the vision, you know, certainly uh, advanced by Elon Musk, you know, with the whole Tesla, you know, um, uh, offering is, you know, that automobiles are increasingly becoming computers on wheels. And so I think uh, this is aligning with, you know, fulfilling uh, that vision. And uh, overall, it's good news because, yeah. again, it's just making these built-in capabilities safer. And a lot of it really is coming down to onboard computing. Yes, there will be a role for 4G, 5G connectivity for infotainment, 
Uh, but there's still, I think, a little confusion that, oh, if you have an autonomous car and it's relying on sensors embedded throughout, you know, an urban grid, and if one of those yeah. sensors doesn't communicate the car, the car will suddenly shut down and cause, you know, an independent set of uh, accidents. Uh, well, that that's not what is being pursued here, that, right. at least in the foreseeable future. That would be much further out, and it would be, you know, for selective capabilities like fleet management, right. not, you know, individual cars. And, and so, you know, we can't get too far ahead of ourselves. We really have to focus on when it comes to the 4G, 5G connectivity capabilities, right. it really is a specific set of um, uh, uh, technical features. And it's not a comprehensive, you know, car capability uh, that um, is, is going to be offered anytime soon. Yeah, absolutely.